Dr. Hermann Oberth, who pioneered rocket design during World War II, once cryptically stated, quote, We cannot take the credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, The people of other worlds. Additionally, according to Above Top Secret by Timothy Good and William Morrow, Oberth's fellow space pioneer, Werner von Braun, echoed this mysterious reference, even including the existence of extraterrestrials, when he stated in 1959, quote, We find ourselves faced by powers which are far stronger than hitherto assumed, and whose base is at present unknown to us. More I cannot say at present. We are now engaged in entering into closer contact with those powers, and within six or nine months' time, it may be possible to speak with more precision on the matter." End quote. Just who were the people of other worlds that Dr. Oberth spoke of? Or indeed, these entities that von Braun referred to? With only Oberth's quotations, one could presume a possible reverse engineering of alien craft, However, with von Braun's more detailed exposé, this possibility seems to be excluded in favor of pertained actual assistance and contact with advanced beings. Many people also believe that an encounter with these beings, along with Third Reich craft built with their technology, was once encountered in an operation known as Operation High Jump. According to certain independent researchers, Richard E. Byrd, admiral of this operation, possibly encountered a hostile, formidable opponent, who he has claimed to have described as fighters that were able to fly from one pole to another with incredible speed. In reality, however, whatever Byrd's expedition experienced may never be fully publicly disclosed, as all reports, including Byrd's personal log entries, remain mysteriously classified. But the connections between these curious quotations and indeed the rumored encounters by this classified operation are certainly intriguing. Furthermore, Operation High Jump was originally organized by Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal. Interestingly, in 1949, Forrestal was sent to recover from a supposed nervous breakdown at Bethesda Naval Hospital. However, after allegedly ranting to staff about the Antarctic, UFOs, and an underground Nazi city, Forrestal was denied all visitors. Shortly after, he mysteriously died in a fall from his hospital room window. What did Forrestal know? Were his perceived delusional rants based upon reality? According to the legend of the German Vril Society, a secret remote viewing was held in 1919 at an old hunting lodge near Brechtesgaden. During this event, Maria Arsik, a self-proclaimed medium, presented her supposed telepathic messages, which she claimed to have received from an extraterrestrial civilization existing in the constellation of Taurus. It is reported that these messages contained instructions for building a circular flight machine. It is interesting to note that German Oriental scholars and occultists alike regarded such mystic teachings with complete seriousness, with well-documented, well-funded, diligent efforts put forth to discover and such individually proclaimed powers and their messages therein into viable technological realities. What happened in the Antarctic? Who were these people from other worlds that von Braun and Oberth spoke of? Did the Third Reich make contact with an alien or possible highly advanced once ancient civilization, allowing them to engineer mystifying technologies? We find such claims, rumors, and fragments of evidence to support such possible realities highly compelling. Hey guys, Matt from Mystery History here. So today I wanted to share with you a confession. A confession by this man. His name is Dr. Allah Shaheen, and he is one of the world's leading Egyptologists. He is also head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department. He rubs shoulders with top Egyptian government figures and members of the Egyptian state of antiquities. If anyone knows about Egypt's most inner-kept secrets, it's this guy. In December 2010, he was hosting a conference to a select group of delegates about ancient Egyptian architecture, when he let something slip. 
he admitted to being complicit in the covering up of an astonishing secret. He has since retracted the statement and is now denying he ever made it. However, during the conference, a handful of press reporters were present. They all ran the same story, shortly after the conference, all quoting the same remark, making it rather difficult to believe that he didn't actually say it. In what I can only imagine was a misjudgment of trust, when questioned regarding the possibility of alien involvement in the construction of ancient Egypt, he not only confirmed this to be the case, but confessed to knowing, and I quote, there's still something inside the pyramid that is not of this world. In a previous video, I shared how the tomb of Osiris, once believed to have been a mythical god from Egyptian legend, a belief Egyptian antiquities would like to keep alive, was actually discovered recently. The tomb was found by traversing an access tunnel system just a few inches in diameter. From the moment this impossible access passage was discovered, they quietly knew they had found something amazing. The moment Egyptian authorities finally managed to get a robot with a camera into the tomb, a complete media blackout descended upon Egypt. Walls were constructed around the tomb and no information regarding the find was shared for several weeks. When the world was eventually allowed near the site, the tomb was found to have been conveniently empty. No explanation as to how grave robbers could have possibly got into the tomb has ever been produced. Was Osiris an alien? Was our previous research bang on the money? Even in Egyptian legend, the figure known as Thoth was said to have allowed beings such as Ra and Osiris to exist in our realm. Were ancient Egyptian artists accurate in their depictions of these beings as hybrids? If, as Dr. Allah Shahid states, along with ancient Egyptian literature, that there is indeed something otherworldly under the Great Pyramid, could it really be a portal? And if it is, why hide it? Regardless of what it is, they are definitely hiding something. What otherworldly thing do you think is hidden under the Great Pyramid? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care. There are many curious things found throughout recent years found within images taken by Google Earth, with some being particularly peculiar, one such find being that of a seemingly frozen ship measured at 400 feet long. It is as if it were picked up and planted upon this enormous block of frozen ice within Antarctica. Dismissed by some as simply being that of a naturally formed block of ice, Yet the resemblance to a cruise liner is unquestionably uncanny. If indeed a ship like the one we have covered previously, an old lifeboat found in the 70s within an inescapable lagoon within the interior of Bouvi Island, one of the most inhospitable and remote places on Earth, ravaged almost yearly by storms, with no explanation as to how it arrived there. This ship would undoubtedly raise similar questions, some conspiracy theorists even putting forward the posit that it is possibly the remnants of a Nazi vehicle, a theory linked to a base long claimed to have been created down here during the Second World War. Whatever the answer, questions regarding this curious find remain. Could this really be a ship literally frozen solid in an almost impossible location? And if so, where did it come from, and how did it get to where it rests now? We find this discovery highly compelling. During the last few years, reports have begun to circulate regarding a joint team of American and European explorers in the Antarctic. Around 20 kilometers across the Antarctic border, this team of non-governmental explorers actually confirmed the existence of a set of three ancient stone block pyramids peering out from beyond the shrinking ice. The preliminary finding was even published in the press, yet all subsequent information on the find has been silenced. Possible aerial photographs of the location may have been leaked, as there are some very compelling images of pyramidal ruins in Antarctica now circulating the web. American and European governments have attempted to shrug off the accusations as absurd. However, as more and more specialists are converted by substantial evidence within Egypt as to the sheer age of the Sphinx and Pyramids, 
Many researchers now conclude that these huge ancient structures found around the world, were most likely built prior to the last ice age. Additionally, fossilized ancient palm tree pollen has been found in numerous sites within Antarctica, confirming it was once much warmer than it is today, making it highly possible that past civilizations did indeed inhabit this now frozen continent. The Pyre Rees map, is another compelling piece of artifactual evidence to suggest that past cultures had an intimate knowledge of the Antarctic coast before it was coated in ice. A map built from the vast ancient literature once housed, and subsequently destroyed in the wrecking of Alexandria's library, knowledge which could have proved the existence of this past culture. Ancient pyramidal sites dot every continent of Earth, the only continent government strongly deny the existence of any ancient ruins whatsoever is Antarctica. Just what are they hiding in Antarctica? There just happens to have been some very strange visitations to the Antarctic as of late. In the past year alone, countless top officials from Russia, America, religious groups, and other official bodies from around the world have been quietly visiting the continent in succession, with no substantial reasons for their visits being given. Have they found an ancient city perfectly preserved in the ice? Maybe an ancient advanced technology, maybe even a stargate. The question is, will we ever be told? Our conjecture that there is a lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization could be proven beyond doubt by one continent in particular. Antarctica, for many millennia, this land has been encased, perfectly preserved, laying beneath miles of ancient ice. The Piri Rees map, something which we have discussed in the past, has long been argued to prove just that long claimed as showing that of the landmass of Antarctica free of ice. If true, it would have been impossible to have created, according to modern paradigm, thought to have originated from the embers of the great fire of Alexandria, this catastrophe, a tragic loss to man's understanding of our own origins. Yet, this map survived, clearly displaying what many believe to be the continent of Antarctica, before becoming what is now a frozen ice cap at the pole of our planet. It is now an incredibly inhospitable place, one of the reasons we feel there may be intact, undisturbed ruins which may dot the land, known to be the driest place on Earth, and in addition to this compelling possibility of submerged yet highly advanced ruins, there may be many other unexplained anomalies that, due to their incredibly remote geographical placement, across some of the world's now most impenetrable natural obstacles, recording some of the lowest temperatures on Earth, if proven beyond doubt to exist, would be proof of a preserved pre-Ice Age existence for advanced man. Yet due to this immense cold, and the fact that it is a largely unexplored tundra capable of killing even the most experienced of explorers, Many things which rest here remain unexplored. Yet just like that of the face of the moon, one must ask the question, just what could be laying there, buried within or resting upon this giant ice sheet many miles deep? Objects just like the anomalies discovered in Roswell, New Mexico in July 1947, which, although strongly argued by officials, as that of a United States Army Air Force's balloon, which crashed at tremendous velocity at a ranch near Roswell, which many claim was in fact a UFO which crashed, would inevitably be covered up by whatever power was capable of not only visiting such anomaly, but retrieving it. Crashing into the seemingly endless tundra, and our next item of interest could behold just as controversial in origin as that of the causation for what many claim as the Roswell Conspiracy, a truth so controversial only top military personnel would be privy to. This remarkable image taken by satellite clearly displays an as yet unexplored anomaly. Resting at the basin of a hilltop, it presumably crashed into with its velocity upon impact sliding the mysterious object down the side of the mountain. When other such objects have been discovered in the past, indeed in the same way as that of amateur sleuths, poring over satellite images looking for these exact features, military vehicles have been later snapped at these same locations, 
unquestionable proof of the world's government's interest in such discoveries, not only due to the environment, but also its remoteness. Found in permanently frozen areas could mean that if such objects do indeed turn out to be that of an alien craft, could also be in a condition to be successfully reversed-engineered if not repaired by man. A technological explosion would inevitably occur. A lucrative operation indeed. So, we find it curious that several such events have been claimed to have occurred since 1947. Could this also be posited to be as a result of this exact claim scenario? Discovered, retrieved, reverse-engineered, and finally either adapted for military purpose or commercial profits. What is this thing laying far away in the frozen Antarctic? Is it indeed a crashed alien vehicle? We find the anomaly highly compelling. In the January of 1974, a man by the name of Duncan Lunan published an article called Space Probe from Epsilon Bootis. It concerned a mystery surrounding long-delayed radio echoes, or LDEs, first reported in the 1920s. Mysterious echoes of the transmitter's voice, which were far too powerful to have been simple reflections from Earth, experimenters studying all over the world found that their outgoing pulses were being returned to them with a delay of three seconds, as if they were being amplified and returned by something at the distance of the Moon, but definitely not the Moon itself. These delay times began to vary upwards from 3 seconds in increasingly complicated sequences, but with no variation in intensity, still indicating a single source amplifying and returning the pulses. Professor Ron Bracewell of Stanford suggested in 1960 that the echoes might have been rebroadcast by an unmanned probe from another civilization, a craft attempting to get our attention, and in 1972, Duncan would make an incredible discovery, successfully making a translation of the echo patterns. The variations of delay times appeared random, but Professor Bracewell himself had suggested that if indeed a probe, the first signal might be a star map. After plotting the delay times in chronological order, he found what indeed looked like a star map. Upon showing this to astronomers, it was recognized to have been a warped image of Epsilon Bootis, in the constellation Bootis. Arcturus, the brightest star in the constellation, seemed to be out of place in the map, but on checking was shown at its plotted location within the map about 13,000 years ago. Predictably, the discoveries were treated as suspect and with great hostility by the academic community. Sadly, this pressure led to Duncan withdrawing his entire translation work and research. Did Duncan Lunan actually decipher the first message ever translated from an alien civilization? More research into this incredible echo anomaly is clearly needed, and the results of which released to the world. President Putin recently visited one of the most mysterious places on Earth, the ruins of the ancient town of Archim. Historians, archaeologists, and UFOologists have spent many years trying to unravel the secrets of this place. Which nation was living in Archim more than 40 centuries ago? How did people of such ancient civilization manage to accomplish the incredible technological progress on Earth there? The Archim Valley was supposed to be flooded in 1987. Local authorities were intending to create a water reservoir there to irrigate drought-prone agriculture. However, scientists found strange ancient circles in the center of the valley. Authorities gave archaeologists 12 months to explore the area. Scientists were shocked at what they discovered. However, it is not the unusual earthworks that have attracted investigators, but rather, what was recently discovered beneath. A discovery which has seen several renowned alien investigators rushing to this remote and forgotten slice of the Russian landscape in search of the undeniable proof that we are not alone. Researcher Maria Makarova and her team were able to unearth a remarkably well-preserved skeleton in the ground beneath the site. However, it soon became evident that this was no normal skeleton. 
And although the research team have attempted to disagree with the clear possibility of it not actually being human remains, choosing to suspect that the skeleton somehow belonged to a woman from the Sarmati tribe, which lived in what is now Ukraine, southern Russia, and Kazakhstan about 2,000 years ago. It unfortunately appears that this is an attempt to discredit the real possible value of these remains. This being a logical move by all professional researchers funded by an academia, which would not appreciate such honest and clearly forgivable assumptions based on current evidence being publicly disclosed. For example, firstly, the Sarmatia tribe may have practiced head binding. However, this practice is largely believed to have been located in other parts of the world, and the lack of any additional finds within the tribe supporting this assumption would seem this is a deceptive conclusion to arrive at. Additionally, when head binding was undertaken, unmistakable evidence of such is left upon the skull. Deformed cranial napping, the stitching of the skull will not appear as normal, yet, alas, the stitching will always be present and easily identifiable. Though astonishingly, this skull clearly shows no evidence of binding on the photographs. What's more, and perhaps more pressing, is the lack of any cranial stitching visible whatsoever. This stitching of the skull plates is part of human growth. We all have them, yet this skeleton does not. What do you think regarding the find? An abnormal tribe member buried beneath an extremely ancient, mysterious site? Or something else entirely? In July 2012, a curious Google Earth image was discovered by Russian UFO researcher Valentin de Tarive. The image quickly made its way around the media, with varying reactions. Andrew Fleming from the British Antarctic Survey told the UK newspaper The Mail Online that the object was clearly a simple crevasse in the ground. They can be tens of meters deep, nothing unusual, it's certainly not a UFO. Well it seems he may be right, however, an image purporting to be from the same site taken one year earlier has been uncovered. Researchers looking at previous satellite images of the same site taken in April and December 2011, found what appear to be four massive vehicles parked in the snow, pointed towards a mysterious object. There appears to be more than a simple crevasse going on in this image. What appears to be going on is that a huge scientific research center has been deployed to a meaningless location in an icy desert. Which just so happens to be by an object and strange feature in the ice, that looks all for the world like a crashed aircraft pattern, only for it to completely vanish a year later. What should we make of these earlier satellite images? While some reports identify the shapes as tanks, if they really are vehicles, they're massive in size, probably around 70 feet in length. There are no tire tracks, but they could have been covered by snow or blown away. They look more like research centers, also note the drift patterning around them towards the object, is this camouflage canvas, why are all the drifts in the same direction and none on the other side of the vehicles? Is it a crashed alien craft? If it was, I would have definitely filled in the hole afterwards.